A lot of people did not understand why I destroyed my last train station. And quite simply, it's because it just didn't fit the vibe that I'm looking for with my new city. And here is a quick sneak peek of what I did for my new train station. And I personally love it. But after many hours of sorting parts from the mass drop fest that I have or the rapid destruction of Lego buildings that I did, I started to place some of the buildings back on my table and thought to myself, you know what? I don't want to just sort and clean and throw everything back on the table. I really want to start building something. So I decided to start with my train station first. And what I did is I, I first mocked it up over at my build station. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to build things at my build station and get a, a decent idea because all my parts are readily accessible, which makes things a lot easier because anytime you have a change of heart, change of direction, change of thoughts, you can just reach back and grab a new part and change things up as you go. What I'm doing for this particular building to give it the appearance that it has is I'm building everything with one by two plates and I'm using a combination of colors. I am using dark orange, dark tan, dark red, and also reddish brown plates. That's helping to add to the effect of the brick look. Um, it is very time consuming and it is a little bit stiff on the fingers, but the finished product looks really amazing. The other thing that I made sure I did with this particular design was all the windows, all the doors, anything that is going to be put into the building was built in a manner and fashion that it would be recessed into the brick, like most houses are. I've never seen a house where the windows are flush with the front of the brick. They're always recessed. So to me, that was a very important feature to make sure I included. And here's the finished result. To me, the color combination works really well. And you can even go a step further and add round plates in it to give it an even more natural brick look. I added all these snot bricks on the side because once I get this placed, I'm going to have a bunch of ivy growing up the side and over and onto the roof. And then on the facade of it, you'll see I have these two clips. And what those clips are for is to hold on the canopy that I'm going to be attaching to this once it's placed. And now let's get to the city building portion of the video. The first thing I had to do is I have to ballast my train tracks. And to ballast the train tracks, it's simply using a ton of plates. And what you'll see here is I uh, plated it all in. I actually made a mistake. I realized it by placing the track on it. I had to rip a bunch of it out, scoot it all out one stud, and then put it back down. Better I caught it now than later. The method that I'm using for ballasting is the pin lug method, and you can go to their website and they have free downloadable instructions for curves, straights, any type of train track ballasting you want to do, even switch track. They have instructions available. So if you want to learn what I'm doing here, simply go to their website. Now here we're going to be starting with the mills portion of it, the mills plate. And I'm doing a little differently than I normally would. I am going to be using the Brickyard 32 by 32 plates. And I'm doing that for, well, to be perfectly honest, I'm doing it because I don't mind drilling holes through them. They're extremely cheap and they match Lego's color perfectly. Now you're going to see I'm using a 16 by 16 plate to kind of measure out where the loading platform is going to be placed. And I wanted to have a long loading platform because with most small town train stations, you don't have a very big building, but you do have a very large pavilion area for everybody to wait for the train to arrive. And then that way the passengers can load and unload from the train once it's at the station. And now we can get to the fun part. We can get the station physically placed and start doing the awnings. These are what I came up with. They're seven bricks in height total. And then with the two arches, it's a total of six studs in width. And then I'm mounting them using jumper plates. And the reason that I have to use the jumper plates to put these posts on was so that way it would hold the roof together without there being a gap in between them. Now that we got it all together, I'm just going to kind of set it aside. And I pre-built the awning that's going to attach to the two brackets I showed you earlier. And with me doing that, it's going to allow me to attach the awning to either side and then figure out exactly what I have to do for placement of the legs. What the end result ended up being is I had to add two plates. One plate was a jumper plate and the other plate was just a standard plate to hold it up. 
So that way the awning would line up with the awning that's attached to the building. And it makes for a really nice clean look. Once we get all the tiles placed on it anyway. And it is a ton of tiles. So it is a nightmare amount of work. But man, the end results look freaking awesome. As you can see here. One thing I'm going to say though, even though I do really like how this is looking, I feel I need a little bit more detail on the roof. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is adding a window and a chimney to the back side of this. But first, let's see how it looks with everything fully tiled. <laughs> and again, like I said, it is a monster amount of tiles. I want to say it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 860 tiles total that I had to use for this. And the reason that I actually did this particular method, not only does it look good, but I was trying to get a slate roof look to it. So that's why I used the colors that I chose, which is dark bluish gray, light bluish gray, and then sand blue, because they really complement each other well. Next, I had to make up some of the ivy pieces I was going to have growing up the wall. And all I'm simply using is the green, small, and large leaf pieces with the smaller olive green three leaf sprues in each one of these but before i could place any of that i had a lot more tile work to do this time though it was on the loading platform and the reason i had to get the tile work done on the loading platform first was so that way i could place the leaf pieces on the side without having to worry about retiling it and removing those later i took the awnings off because i thought since i'm going to be tiling the deck I might as well just tile it all out and just be finished with it. And it made it a lot easier by removing the awnings off the top of it to do it. I at first tried to do it underneath, but it was just way too much of a struggle. And then for a barrier wall, for, because you don't want people that didn't pay to get on the train to be hopping up to leave, I put the little white fence. And the little white fence was quite simply because I thought it helped add to some contrast to all the gray that you see going around with the loading platform. Now we can finally get that beautiful leafy green pieces on the side. And here's the finished product, guys. At least this is where I'm stopping on this building for now. I still have a lot more work to do. I want to add a lot of different grass and weeds and things like that in and around the train tracks. And I also want to add some stonework in there. And even on this side, I have to tile in and do the deck and the entryway and a parking lot out in the front of the building. But really happy with the progress I was able to make on this particular build over the last few days. And I hope you guys loved seeing the progress as well.